Welcome back to the Dirty Shop. I want to show you guys what I've been up to for the past uh, month or so. My wife took a six week trip and on most of these improvements I did before that trip. And I wasn't able to go along with her, but she was felt safe and secure traveling in this trailer and felt uh, that she could use it without my help, which is nice. I was kind of bummed I didn't get to go, but uh, I was glad that she could go without me. But I wanted to show you the improvements I made just before the trip. I added this tongue box on and I picked the aluminum one because it matched this, the front of my trailer a little bit. The, the diamond plate pattern's a little different, but the uh, aluminum kind of matches. Aluminum is lighter and this shiny aluminum will reflect a lot of the heat off this box to keep it from getting too hot inside, which is important if you're going to store your battery or just about anything in there. You don't want it to be cooked on a continuous basis. You can get these in a couple different sizes, but basically the size is the width across the back here from corner to corner and you just measure the front of your trailer and you get the size that kind of fits that closest. There's only a couple sizes available, I think 29 inches and like 33 inches, I think this is the bigger one. But uh, I've got an access point on the side here, which is just an exterior 220 volt plug outlet, but I just didn't put the plug in it, obviously, it's just a hole. And then it's nicely lockable, and I've got most of the stuff that I was keeping under the bed inside, now in here. The battery's in there, the, uh, my heater's in there, I've got a toolbox, I've got the cords for my uh, solar panel, which I also put in, and I've got an inverter, or a, actually a battery charger and a solar charger. I don't have an inverter in here yet, but I can actually just take, just take the cord from the 120 and run it out here and then plug it in, and I can have 120 on the inside if I need it as well. So I'm gonna show you how I did this. I hope you enjoy. Warning, this video may contain scenes of extreme untidiness. Viewer discretion is advised. For the electrical in this uh, in this box, I'm going to take this. This is a 12.3 Romex standard interior Romex. I was going to use a uh, conduit coated 12.3, uh, but I couldn't find any uh, except for in like 30 foot rolls. And I didn't want to pay you know for fifty dollars worth of uh, wire when I only needed this much. But this is basically going to be under all the trailer, so it's not going to be exposed to the sun, which is really what would damage this cable. So in order to mount that up in the box, I got a couple of things here. I've got these these waterproof flanges. I decided to pick some of these up instead of using the other ones I had. So the, the Romex will fit through these slots here and this will go into the box but down on the bottom here so that the, the wiring can run out and it'll run under the trailer and back up into the inside. I've got another one of these for the inside. On the side of the box here I've got this um, this cover which is meant to cover a uh, electrical box for an exterior use electrical box but instead I'm just going to bolt it right onto the side here and then cut into the cab of the box into the body of the panel in the box here so I can run my extension cord out of this hole and then run it off to, to charge it up without having to leave my box unlocked so I've got all those parts I'm gonna I've got inside and I've removed a bunch of material so we're gonna go in there and uh, get to work on the inside first so once again I've had to remove a bunch of my interior uh, so I could do this wiring, but hopefully this will be the last time on this piece for a while. What I'm going to do is this the piece of aluminum that I had here, the trim, I'm going to put this electrical box into it, like that. My This is my wire for the interior plugs. That will run into the box, and then that will connect to the, to the plugs here. And then these plugs will get this 12-3 that will run out the bottom here and go over to my electrical box outside. So I'm going to get on to working on that and hopefully I'll get all the electrical installed today. This uh, electrical box here is a drywall electrical box. It's made to be set into drywall without being screwed to anything else. 
but it has these little tab ears on it here. And when you tighten the screws down, the ears come up and lock down and it just pulls it up against here. And so that's gonna work pretty good for what I'm doing. It's gonna go right in here. And that box is about the maximum. It actually pushes a little bit. Against, it just pushes against the insulation a little bit, but it shouldn't be too bad. I'm actually gonna cut the insulation where the box is hitting so that it can compress back. I'm not gonna cut the insulation out. I'm just gonna cut it so that the so that it can push back a little bit. Should be fine. Okay, now I'm gonna open up these slots here and run my wiring in. Okay, now obviously I still have my 12 volt wire here that needs to attach. Unfortunately, it's just a little short to reach that box. It's really nice. But the plan is to use the third wire, because this is 12-3, 12-3 means it has three hot wires, or it's got two hot wires, a neutral and a ground. The ground is the bare one here. So what I'm going to do is because I want my 12-volt system totally independent of my, my 120 system, but this red wire is going to be my hot lead for my 12-volt, and then I'm going to run just a ground wire to the frame. And then these other two will be my 120-volt and my 120-volt ground, but I'm not going to tie this ground to this one. Um, I probably could and it wouldn't be an issue. So um, these will have to go in the box and this this will attach to another little lead. It's going to go up to my 120 volt. Now I've got my plug set up in here. I've got my wiring hopefully done the way I need it behind there. I'm not going to put anything else back in here until I have a chance to, ch to test all this. So I'm going to go outside now and run the wire under the trailer and over to the box and uh, set it up there. This trailer had, if you might have noticed, there's a little hole in the corner where the where the plywood wasn't cut quite perfectly. So I just ran the wire out of that rather than using my flange coupling. And I'm just gonna go back up in there when I'm done and spray it with some of that spray foam, seal it all up. So now I've got my wire, you can see run right there. It comes out of the bottom of the trailer in this corner back here and runs across above the beam. And it's gonna run down this beam towards where the front is because the battery box is gonna be right in the front and I don't want the wire to run free through the box here. Uh, I could put it in, in the back corner too and just stick it to the side. It doesn't really matter that much. What I'm going to do though is wherever I need the wire to stay still I've got some of these mounting bases. You see right here. You look at if you can see the label hopefully. These one inch mounting bases they have a just a piece of uh, double sided tape on the back and you run a zip tie through the slots on the side here and you zip tie your wire on to wherever you want. You just glue that to the thing. Make sure you got a clean surface, stick it on and that'll hold your wire down. Really handy for this sort of thing. So here we are inside the box. You can see the battery in the battery box is not full size battery. I could do that in the future if I want a bigger battery. But what I am going to do is since I got this nice space over here on the side, I'm actually going to take my coupler and I'm going to put it like about there probably in the box, maybe in the forward position. Probably actually about there is probably the right spot. And But it's going to come up from the bottom so my wire will come off the terminals and go down through there and then my other free wires can come out the side of the box here to my various cables and connectors. And that way I don't have any wires floating around inside this box down near the bottom. I'll have a couple up here along the sides where my uh, chargers will be. But I'm going to go through there, right there. And then in the other side of the box, I'll just screw it down with a, a, a screw. So that will hold down one side of the, of the battery box. And then this a screw on the other side will hold down the other side. Now I got my box, got my uh, wire inlet in there, and uh, I've got the box lined up where I want it. I'm gonna screw, I'm gonna drill it down, or bolt it down with these four inch lag bolts. They're gonna go through here, all the way through the frame, because I don't want this sucker moving at all. But in order to do this, obviously a regular drill bit is too short to go through there, so I've got this like 12 inch, quarter inch drill bit for it. So I'm going to measure and mark where I want these. Now I want to mount this wet cover, or my access cover, right about there. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna kind of fudge it in. I'm gonna, it doesn't have to be perfect for me, so.
Okay, I've got my chargers in here. And the last thing I really want to do today on this electrical is I want to get this hooked up and ready to go. I don't have my inverter yet, but uh, in the future I will. So I'll be able to hook this up. This, obviously, this is way too long. My inverter is probably going to go right here or right here. So I only need this to be maybe about, about that long. I don't want to cut it too short. So I'm going to leave it a little extra long. If I want to in the future, I'll cut it off shorter. But for now, I'm going to cut this cable off. Ah, let me get my tools here. To make sure I've got enough length to get anywhere in my box. And I might want to put my inverter. Okay. Now, if you guys remember, I used, I have this, this is a 12.4 or 12.3 cable. I mean, it's just, or a Romex. That means it's got four lines in it, a white, a black, a red, and a ground. So I want to use the red that I had out as my uh, positive lead for my 12 volt. That's why I have it on there. That's why I got the extra size. So I'm going to cut this down the side of the Romex all the way to the box, basically. Right all the way down there. Okay. I'm going to pull all this casing off of it. Cut that away. And then pull this paper away, too. Okay, so now I got my four leads. I want to save my red out because I'm using that for my 12 volts. So I'm going to put that out of the way. And I've got these three other leads, right? I want to attach these to my connector here. I bought, I've got a high quality add on plug in with nice screw connectors. You want to get good ones of these because the, the cheap ones will overheat sometimes. Um, but I don't want this free wire all just hanging out like this. So what I've got is some shrink tube. I'm just going to run the shrink tube over these three wires all the way down to the end if I can't. Well, that was a total pain. Next time I'm gonna buy a bigger shrink tube. But for now, well, it's something I had already, so that's why I used it. And now I'm gonna use the heat gun and just tighten this down. Okay, now I've got my wire nicely encased in the shrink tube. I'm gonna attach this cable connector to the end of it. So I've got my solar panel set up. I've got my uh, solar charge controller here on the inside. After a little bit of looking at the uh, instruction manual, I figured out how to make that operate right. So I've got my cables hooked up, which are really heavy duty. And I've done, gone and taken these two cables, put a zip tie on the end, and then I wrapped them in duct tape just to keep them together because they were really floppy and long. You could see them out there. My panel is out there in the sun. So I'm going to bring you down here and show you what it looks like on the uh, controller. Here's our controller all hooked up. You can see the modes operating through there. 14.3 volts. And then 100% on the battery is fully charged. The panel is 32 degrees Celsius. And that's 15 is the load mode. That's the operational mode it's in. And error, that's error zero. So you can see that, that that's the way it operates down here. You can see that it's just right now it's got the panel incoming to the battery. And that's all it's got set up on. If I push this button in the manual mode, it will turn the light on, which would connect to these two wires, which I don't have set up. So if I, there you go. Now the light is, oh, I turned it on and off. There it goes, just a little delay. So that would say that the light is on. Now it's putting power out to these two connectors. So these two connectors down here are my incoming power. This is outgoing to the battery, and this is the load that I can turn on and off, or I can set with a, uh, in a different load mode, I can set it as a, you know, night day lighting system, which is kind of cool. So a quick interior view for you of the finished product. I've got my extension cord, obviously here. These are the cords for my solar panel. These are a little overkill. I think in the future, I'm probably gonna make a lighter cord for the solar panel, because I just don't need the kind of voltage um, or wattage, whatever it is that these could carry. But for now, they work fine. Um, I've got a toolbox with some unsundry tools, you know, duct tape, hatchet, that sort of thing. Always useful for a trailer. Um, I've got that little heater that you've seen in previous videos. I've got my leveling blocks uh, for the trailer in case I'm on rough ground, and I've got some stop blocks here. This is, the, uh, this is just a charger 
from Walmart and I can run the cords out through the side here to charge my battery up. And then over here against this side is the solar charge controller. Under here I've got my battery. The uh, charger is hooked up to the battery directly just with the clips. And then these other wires go out to the different systems. This cord here is my 120 volt cord and I can run that out the box here and plug my 120 in. And then the uh, 12 volt also runs down along the same cord and into the trailer. And you'll see how I did that earlier in the video. So there you go.